There are two huge hornet's nests up there, and I am allergic to them, and if I get stung, you might see me go into anaphylactic shock. <laughs> this could be my last video review. Hello, Amazon.com. It's me, Bo Shevisu. I just installed this little gable vent up there. Now, a forewarning, I am just your average consumer. I'm not one of those monotone construction workers with a mustache, and I'm not gonna lecture you on code and all that. If you are like me and you actually wanted a real world example of how this looks on a house, well, this is what it looks like, and I'm also going to give you a few hints, tips, tricks um, to hopefully save you a bit of heartache um, when installing this thing. So, it does come in two sections. They're basically sandwiched together. There's the face that goes in in this direction, and then there's the back that goes in from the attic. So yes, you will have to be in your attic. And we're gonna quickly climb up there so you can get a close-up look. I say quickly because there are two huge hornet's nests up there, and I am allergic to them, and if I get stung, you might see me go into anaphylactic shock. <laughs> This could be my last video review. Hey, check it out. Okay, so there are the hornet's nests. And this is it. Isn't that cool? So the design of this thing is that it's impossible for rain to actually get in there because of the back. The back is basically the opposite of this. And uh, as you can see, I put caulk all the way on the inside, so it's very, very well sealed in there. I will probably paint this eventually when I paint my house, because right now, let's be honest, it looks kind of ugly just being white like that. But hey, it's purposeful right now. It's on the backside of my house too. No one cares what the backside of your house looks like. So there you go. I went a little crazy with the screws um, because I actually went a little too far in with these screws right there. So I would recommend going out like this so it actually bites into the wood. This missed the wood that it actually went into the cutout itself. I basically put it on there. I traced around the edge. I then cut out using a skill saw where I traced it on the building and uh, I basically cut it from the inside also uh, because if you cut it from the outside you could be hitting some electrical or some weird things on the inside. I know you're not supposed to thread electrical right there but who knows? It, these used houses, you never know how people wire these things. So anyway, once it's cut out then you uh, basically put it one from the outside and then one from the inside. It is best to have two people so you can kind of force them together. It's not possible to do this by yourself. You actually need something on the other side. Before you sandwich them in there, put some caulk all the way around the edges, a generous amount because this uh, right there, as you can see the mountain, a uh, wind comes whipping down off of that mountain. It just slams the side of this house. Uh, so I definitely needed some kind of weather resistant type uh, gable vent. And uh, yeah, it, it, it looks pretty decent, and it's, it's surprisingly big compared to some other people's around here. Uh, but hopefully it will drop my temperature in there because I have horrendous ventilation up in my attic. And also maybe someday I'll get a nice light colored roof like that over there so that there's less heat. Yeah, it's about 130 degrees in my attic right now. I know I got a long ways to go, but slowly but surely baby steps to mitigating all the temperature way up there so that that temperature isn't uh, affecting everything down below. But anyway, it's not about me and my situation. It's about you and whether or not this is helpful in determining whether or not this is the right gable vent for you. My name is Bo Chevisu. I look forward to testing, reviewing, and demonstrating more fun things here on Amazon.com.